Well, hello, it's that <laughs> time again. <laughs> hello. hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome to all the Hoop Sisters and Misters joining us. First, I have to give a shout out to the first two comments I saw 
which are Joni and Maggie. You guys are fantastic. I just want to just give you a shout out because you have been on every live I think ever. <laughs> and, and I think that's so cool. And, and I feel like maybe you're still learning something even after you know, I feel like you could maybe teach it. I don't know. So welcome. We're glad you're here. Um, so here we are for day two of the workshop. Linda's ready. Hi, Linda. Hello, Aubrey. Yes, I'm ready. Here's my finished sample right here. Yeah. Actually, it's not finished. We're going to finish it up today. Yes. And that's what's mm -hmm. so nice about this is we kind of break this out into two days. The first day is really fun. She showed us how to stitch out one of the blocks from this design. And then, so you stitch them all out and then you go, what's next? How do I put them together, right? And so <laughs> that's what we're gonna talk about today. And it's it, with the right tools and the tips and tricks that you're gonna learn from Linda today, it's actually a lot easier than you would think. So I, with all that, Linda, I think I'm gonna turn it over to you and you can kind of show us what you got going on. Okay, be happy to. <clears throat> gonna make me bigger there? Okay, yes, perfect. All right. So here is the block that I stitched. Hold on, I don't wanna lose my sample. Here's the block I stitched yesterday during the live. And I just, I didn't wanna take it out of the hoop yet because I, I, well, I stitched another block so I can show you how to join two together. But I wanted to give you an idea how we can save a little bit on Battleizer. This is a hoop big enough for one block. So if that's what you would do in your, on your machine, you could just cut a strip of it. This is across the width of Battleizer. Battleizer is 24 inches wide. And I just rehoop. So I've got my first block, my second block. Now, if I wanted to make a third block, I can just take this out of the hoop, move it down, and put my hoop back. And then when I stitch my block, I move it all the way to the bottom of my hoop. That's how we get them so close together. So that'll help you save a little bit on Battleizer. Okay, so now that we've got them stitched, we're gonna trim them. <clears throat> so the first thing I'm gonna do is just cut them rough, cut them apart <clears throat> with a rotary cutter, of course. And this is the block from yesterday. And it's hard to see because I didn't use water soluble, but there is a curve on this block. You can kind of see it back here. There's a curve. These three sides, I'm gonna use my trimmer by George to completely remove the battleizer on the back of the block. So the trimmer by George is our four and a half inch wide by 12 and a half inch wide acrylic ruler. And it has a metal edge on it with a lip with kind of like a, how can I show you that? Hopefully you can see that little lip right there. Mm -hmm. And what happens with it is we turn back the front of the block and we put that metal edge right up to the basting stitch. And I like to say we give it a little shimmy, lay it down. And you wanna take a peek right here and make sure you have no fabric coming out. And I give it just a little bit of a tug just to get it nice and snug. And then you need to use a 60 millimeter rotary cutter to cut along this because it's tall. So you just put your rotary cutter right along that <clears throat> metal edge and you cut and you remove the battleizer. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on three of my sides that are not curved. If you didn't use the trimmer, you could use a scissor and trim it. You could even turn it back and use a regular ruler and rotary cut it. But the trimmer will protect this fabric from getting a little cut in it. It's just real easy to cut that without this tool. So. So now we have those three sides with the battleizer completely removed. And now I'm going to trim those three sides to a quarter inch. So I like to do it with the wrong side facing up because I can see it a little bit better. And the trimmer has a quarter inch marking on it. 
So I'll put that quarter inch marking right along the edge of my batalizer there that I just cut. And I'll just tidy up these three edges. So now we've got three of our four edges done. Now we have to deal with the curved edge. So there's a couple of ways you can treat it. You can go ahead and trim a quarter inch here through both layers, leaving the batalizer in the seam allowance, or you can go ahead and cut it with the bat, just cut the batalizer out by hand. I like, I did do it by hand just because I didn't want it in my seam. And I'm going to use my big hoop scissors and I'm just going to slide that under there and cut it as close as I can just to remove it. And then I'm going to go ahead and use the trimmer, the quarter inch, and I'm just going to rotate it a little bit to get it around that curve. So there's my first trim block. So let me go ahead and trim this one up really quick as well. Today we also get to see your color combo kind of come to life. Yeah. So pretty. It's different than the other ones. It's fun to do them different. Yeah. I saw some pretty color combos that people were posting. Yes. Linda made her day. Yeah. Linda. She, yes. She posted one that had a red border, which I really liked. That was pretty. Mary posted. Oh, go ahead. Oh, Jeannie posted some fabrics that look wintry. That was pretty as well. Yeah. Mary on YouTube says you made that look too easy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've done a few thousand of them, <laughs> but it really is easy. So now I'm going to flip it over, trim the top layer of my block, quarter inch. You kind of get into a rhythm. And what I do when my machine is stitching, I'll, I'll, I'll trim up the block I did before that, just so I don't have to stand there and trim everything at once. Okay, so now comes the hand cutting part. And like I said, you can leave the battleizer in here if you want. It's thin enough that it won't it won't really hurt anything. But I do like to get that bulk out of there. So now we do. It's hard to make a, a curved cut. So you just do a little bit at a time. So here's my two pieces. And these two get joined together just like that. So pretty. And I had, I see Sue over on YouTube is asking, can you tell me what fabric you used? And I just wanted to put a bug in your, because even if you don't know it, maybe we could post it later. I do know it. Um, I don't know it off the top of my head, but maybe when you're talking, I can take a walk over to, because I'm in the store, I can walk over there and see what line it is. Be happy okay. to do that. Okay. So now we're going to join these two together. Um, these are the very top of the, or the very, obviously the very edge. So these two go together and we have match points. So I've got, hopefully you can see that brown, that brown, um, vine there. I have to join it to this brown vine. And then we also have to join up our satin stitches. So we're going to put them right sides together. And we have this match point thing that we do. So the first thing I'm going to do is put a pin right where that little brown vine is. And I'll pick up my next block and I'll put a pin exactly where that little brown vine is. And then once you get that pin in there, you want to pinch it really tight, hold those two layers together and take a second pin and just put it in your your block just like that and then we can remove this matching pin now i'm going to do the same thing at the corner so anywhere you see what we call a match point you want to pin this way so i got the pin in both layers i'm pinching it and i'm going to also match up that satin edge i'm going to match up the white side of the satin edge 
So we'll put it right in there, pass it through to this side, give it a pinch. And this is just a five inch block, but I'm gonna have, depending on how many things to match, I'm gonna have a few pins in it. I'm gonna match up this leaf right here to this leaf right here. So I've got the pin going through and I'm going to pinch it once again. So unlike regular quilting where you match your cut edge, on this one, we're matching our stitching line. So we get all of our designs to line up. And I'm going to go ahead and do the corner. So now I am ready to stitch this and I'm going to stitch it. I'm going to lower my needle right here where the block basting stitch starts. I never start out here. I start right there. I do one or two back stitches and then I come forward and I'm going to stitch right on that basting line all the way down. And when I get to this end, I'm going to go off of it just a little bit, just a couple of stitches and do just maybe one or two back stitches and then I'm done. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Aubrey, if you want to show them something else, I'll be right back. Yeah, so I want to answer a couple questions I see in the comments. But first, I want to say hi to Miss Kim Goldup, our favorite redhead Aussie. Hey, Kim. I don't know what time it is for Kim, but hi, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're glad you're yeah. here. And then I see a question yes. from Edda. Thank you. Thank you. And this might be something that someone else is experiencing, too. She placed her order for the bundle yesterday but she did not include the trimmer. So if that's you, just give Nina a phone call or email. If it hasn't shipped yet, um, call her. Um, and if it hasn't shipped yet, we will add it to your order and we will make sure that it goes together. So I did pop Nina's um, contact information, but if it's something like that, I would definitely recommend giving her a call on the phone so she can get it taken care of quickly. Cause I know we ship quick. So I wanna make sure to get you taken care of. Okay. Then what I saw another question. Oh, it was just a comment I thought was cute from Vicki Watson. She said, thank you for the demo. I need to get started. I'm procrastinating. <laughs> so we've all been there, right? We've all procrastinated. All right. So while she is actually, you might be done and ready. I I am. Um, hold on. I okay. <laughs> well, right. Mimi, get, grab me the bolt of fabric, but I'm, oh, good. I'll, I'll, get, I'll get to that in a minute. Okay. okay. So here we are all stitch and look at everything lines up by using that little it's pin, perfect. pin matching method. Yeah, looks pretty good. Oh, I remember a comment I saw as you were going along um, and they said, so if we do the square version, we don't have to worry about the curves, right? Right. So maybe, exactly. you, yeah, you can talk about that. It would just basically be the same as the straight. All shape. four, you right. would just do all four sides. So, yep. Okay, so this is a line of fabric from Riley Blake. I'm trying to find the line name. Let's see here, girls, if I can. Of course, we put the sticker. It's called Winter. It's just called oh, Winter. Oh, what do you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. It was like it was meant for this. That's right. Okay, so. Let's talk about how to put all the blocks together then. You already showed you how to pin match it, how to trim it, so you know how to do that. Now when you sew them together, just like any other quilt, you're just gonna, you're gonna lay everything out, get it in the proper place, make sure you don't have anything turned the wrong direction. And then you're gonna sew them. I actually did it in quarters. I divided it in quarters. So I sewed this, these two together, these two together, and then I pressed the seams opposing. So you can see back here that this row is all pressed this way. Oh, wait a second, let me go this way. This row is pressed this way. They're pressed opposing each other. See, they're mm -hmm. going in opposite directions. And then, so I joined the quarters and then I joined them into halves and then I joined the two halves together and that's what this center seam is. So there's really hardly any bulk when you do it that way. 
And I did use a little bit of spray starch when I pressed it and maybe a little bit of steam and got it nice and flat. Okay, Linda, uh, Janine on Facebook is asking, can you press open? I wouldn't press open because Jeannie, it's, it's just, you get, you catch a little bit of your battleizer and your seam on both sides. And so when you try to press it open, I think it's more difficult to press it open than to press it nice and flat to one side. That's why I press them opposing each other. You can see these two, this seam is going that direction. This seam is going that direction. And if you do that, it's just so much easier. All right, good tip. Okay. So once you get it this far and nicely pressed and nicely flat, you're going to take whatever you're going to line it with, put it right side up. Isn't this cute? That is so cute. I love that. It's got the same little berries. It's like and, we planned it. And you're not going to show <laughs> that to me. I just know it. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so then we put them right sides together. And I'm just going to put a few pins around the edge. And I'm going to stitch right on that basting stitch around the whole thing. I'm going to leave a, an opening somewhere around in the circle. And then we can trim it and turn it. The back is, I know you're covering it up, but look how pretty that is, even on the back. <laughs> yeah, with just all the, mm -hmm. yeah, everybody was concerned yesterday about my thread cutter and mm -hmm. I'm going to cover all that up. So it doesn't look so pretty in person, Aubrey. I don't know if it looks good <laughs> on camera. That's, yeah. a, that's wonderful, but it's, it's a little bit, you know, it looks like the back of an embroidery design. Yeah. Okay, so this will just take me a minute. I'm going to pin it all the way around, and I'm going to stitch right on that basting stitch, and then I'll come back. All right. And while she is doing that, I'm going to just, again, sort of recap a couple of things that we talked about yesterday. First and foremost being that we do have shops. Um, that have this in stock and they're ready to give it to you. They also do have the free gift and the bonus. So they have everything that you would get from us. Um, and you could just walk in the store and not pay shipping. So support your local quilt shops. Um, there's, there's a list of them here and we have some more on this page. So if you see a town that looks near you, and this is also posted in our VIP Facebook group. So if you want to take more time to look through what shops those are, um, I highly recommend supporting them because you are very lucky if you have one in your in your neck of the woods. All right. Um, also to recap, just a reminder, this is available um, with the five inch and the seven inch included. So you get both these sizes. Um, it's also multi-formatted. So no matter what embroidery machine you have, um, you'll have the format that will work with your machine. We also did this one in a round and a square. So um, you kind of, if you were around with us at the beginning of the year, we introduced you to In Bloom. It was five inch only and it was just round. So we're listening to your feedback. You wanted a bigger size and you liked the square option too. Um, and it's available on USB or digital download. So... We do recommend pairing this with our Battleizer. Um, we talked to you about that yesterday. The Battleizer is our, our batting and stabilizer combination product in one. So it's perfect for Quilt and the Hoop. It's actually made just for us um, and what we do. And I know a lot of people use it for other things as well. But if you put both of those items in your cart, being the design and the five yards of Battleizer, it's automatically going to take 10% off just through the end of day tomorrow. So it's very limited time. So if you are interested, now's a really good time to grab it. That will get you the best deal possible. It will also pop in our bundle bonus. So if you get, as I mentioned, the design and the five yards of Battleizer, it's going to take the 10% off. It's also going to pop this bonus in. And Linda told me something this morning I didn't know. And that is that the bonus, which is kind of that um, larger, um, she, she used it as a hot pad. So she put some thermal stuff and I can't remember the name of it again today. Insobrite. Insobrite. Thank you. 
in the center of hers to make it a hot pad, which you could do, or you could just use Batalizer and turn it into, I have a candle sitting on my picture there um, or like a mug rug sort. But what I didn't know is it comes in three sizes. So it includes six, eight and 10 inch sizes. So that's really I forgot. Cool. Well, I, that's so cool, though. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love fun surprises like that. So we didn't tell you that yesterday, but we are telling you today. And both of these bonuses and limited time pricing expire tomorrow at the end of the day. So now's a really, really good time to get your hands on it. Um, the 10% off is only on the design and the five yards of Battleizer. But if you don't need Batalizer, you want the bonus, you could add something else to your cart. As long as your cart is totaling $66.98, it will pop that bonus in till the end of day tomorrow. So that's what I needed to share. And I think Linda might be ready for us. I'm ready. Okay, so we have it completely stitched. I went around the entire perimeter. And now what I'm going to do is just trim off the excess with my rotary cutter. You can use a ruler if you like, if you feel more comfortable, but I'm just gonna give it a quick haircut. This is where my opening is. And I left that there just so I could find my opening. Uh, I'm gonna probably make that a little bigger. So what I'm gathering is it doesn't have to be perfect what you're doing. Nope. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're doing a really good job at it, but you don't seem worried about it. That's why I asked. <laughs> well, it's, it's just a seam allowance. It doesn't have to be exact. So this is my opening right here. I'm going to make the lining or the back of it just a hair bigger, just to make it a little easier for myself to turn it in later. All right, so now we're going to reach in here, pull it out. And you can just kind of smooth it out. And I don't have an iron right here, but I think you all get it. Aubrey's got the finished one that's all ironed. Mm -hmm. We'll just kind of smooth it out, give it a press, and this opening, you're going to want to turn it in, turn it in a little bit like this. And I usually will take a little bit of quilt basting glue and just, I've got sun streaming in, I hope you guys can see, mm -hmm. um, and just glue that little opening shut. And then after it's pressed really nice, I will use the Mono Poly thread in my needle and my bobbin, and I will just stitch in the ditch on all these seams, every single seam going both directions. And just for a little added stitching, I will stitch in the ditch by the satin stitch right here. And maybe you could show the back of the one you have, Aubrey, the finished one. Yes, I will. I'm also going to pop a question up. That's a good question that I think we should also talk about. I'm going to pop us on the screen like this. Okay. So you want to see the back of the round one, right? Yeah. Just a little close up view because I, I mentioned you should, I like to stitch in the ditch right around this curve. You can see the curve there where it's stitched and you can see where I stitch in the ditch and it's just monopoly thread in the needle and the bobbin. And you can't see it at all on the front and it holds it all together. And this I is, didn't the, do, oh, go ahead. I don't think I did any stitching on the outer edge. I didn't feel it needed it. A good press, it looked, it looked just fine. Yeah. And just for size reference, this is the five inch, which we talked about how it has two sizes and look how much bigger the seven inch gets. Yeah. So That's they're cool. really nice sizes. And then um, I'll also show you our square sample here in Ohio. Annie turned into a pillow, which I just think is so cute. Nice big poofy pillow. Mm -hmm. So you can also make it a table topper. 
All right. Do you want to talk about the runner and how that would work? So um, what do you mean by runner? So I think, I think, yeah, because I think okay. what she's thinking is with like the pumpkin harvest, for example, we went. Right. So it's this well, is a that, little different. That was designed a little bit differently. This one, if you did that same thing, your design, your embroidery design would not line up. This one is not designed to do that. So if that doesn't bother you, you could still do it. Um, or you can take the rectangular one that you held up, Aubrey, the pillow. And you could just repeat those, maybe do three of those. Mm -hmm. And maybe and maybe the the left and the right side could be the curved edges. That would be that would Thank work you. out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. You have to play around a little bit, see what you like. That's right. <laughs> um, and then we're still getting questions about the fabric, um, the fabric line and the fabric name. And again, we can always post that later if you want, unless you have it there, but this is Riley Blake like. Winter. That's the line. It's by Riley Blake. That's so and pretty. And it's a, it's a very new line. We just got it in a few weeks ago. So stores really should cool. have it. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. Okay. Anything else that you want to share, Linda? I can't think of anything. Did All we right. answer everyone's questions, hopefully? I hope so, but keep them coming. If so, we're, we are going to do a giveaway. So I do have $20 in store credit again today. So if you typed the word pine cone, um, you're going to be entered to win. And if you have any questions for us while we're on here, um, now is a great time to pop that in too. And we will come back and just make sure we got those all answered. But I think, oh shoot, you guys are going to kill me. My giveaway screen is not up. <laughs> I'll go back through and I'll put everybody in a wheel and I will, I will, we will get you a winner. Okay. So keep them coming. The wheel, I gotta, the wheel I'm gonna have to them. Yeah. I'm going to have to put them in the wheel of names. Cause I, my, I thought I had a giveaway window up and it is not there. So oh. I screwed up the giveaway. Oh, I what's... see a question. Debbie asked the stitch length. Um, yeah. Frankly, Debbie, I turn on my machine and whatever it is, is what I use. There you go. And I believe it was like 2.2 probably the default on my particular machine. I did use a walking foot. I don't know if I mentioned that, but I did use a walking foot. I use a walking foot to sew the blocks together as well as put the backing on. It just moves things along a little bit better. Okay. All right. Are you going to finish that sample? It's so close. Maybe then we can post pictures of that one too. I will finish it as soon as we're done. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so someone asked about how much material is required for both sizes. I will tell you when you get it, it's all in here. So we've got the five inch, the seven inch. I could maybe even post this, but it's just we tell you approximately how much battleizer, which five yards will do you. And then depending on whether or not you're doing round and square, but we can post this if you're curious. But it comes with um, the design, whether you get a download or USB, you'll have the fabric requirements and PDF written instructions as well. Mm -hmm. Explain the 10% off again. Okay, I will do that. <clears throat> um, the diameter, yes, I do. Five inch is approximately 19 and a half by 19 and a half. Seven inch is approximately 27 and a half by 27 and a half. So and don't forget the bonus is three sizes, six, eight. Yeah. Seven. I didn't even know that. So that's cool. Too. <laughs> All right. I'm going to pop this screen back up and because someone asked, um, explain the 10%. So 10% off would be if you put in your cart the design and the design could be um, download or USB. So pick how you want your design. And then you're also going to pop into your cart separately the five yards of battleizer. And when you do that, it will automatically take 10% off and it'll show in your total and you won't need a coupon code. Okay. That's the 10% off. The other thing it will do is it will pop the bonus in your cart. So we call that our bundle bonus. So if you put those two things together, you get 10% off and you're going to get the bonus, which is this adorable hot pad that you could use as a mug rug, candle holder, just depends on what you put on the inside of it. So hopefully that. So Mar 
Marion had a question. Do we use a nylon thread when we stitch in the ditch? I do use a Mana Poly. It's a polyester clear thread. And I have it in my needle and my bobbin. Okay. Um, and then someone asked, will the Mono Poly melt if you press nope. the project? Nope. Mono, it's polyester, so it doesn't melt. Nylon thread could melt. So I have not had any trouble. I press it all the time. No problem at all. <clears throat> the bonus will be available separately tomorrow for $15, but right now it's just included in this. Um, but it, if you wanted it separately, you can purchase it tomorrow for $15. Or you can just put, um, I believe it's $66.98. Let me go back. Oh, wrong way. $66.98 worth of anything in your cart will get you the bonus. It won't do the 10% unless it's specific to this bundle. Um, but $66.98 worth of anything in your cart will get you the bonus for free. So if you're thinking about buying it for 15, what else could you put in your cart and get it free? I don't know. I like getting stuff for free. <laughs> <laughs> and that that expires both the 10% off and the bonus <laughs> for free all expire tomorrow at end of day. Okay. Do you have to adjust your machine prep? Nope. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> you do not have to adjust your pressure um, when using the Monopoly. I don't even adjust my tension because I have it in the top and the bobbin and it works fine. And Marion wants to know the name of my store. It's Sewing Concepts in Woodstock, Illinois. Love to see you. Come visit. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't see any other questions. I messed up the giveaway, but I will go back through, <laughs> put your names in a wheel, and post a video with a $20 store credit winner for anybody who typed the word pine cone while we were live. So okay. now you have to do it manually. Oh, well. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> Marion had another question. She said, mm -hmm. do you sell it? I'm assuming she's, I'm assuming you're talking about the design. All of the, the above. We sell all of the above. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we can we'll get it all. Your, we've got your bonus and everything. So if you come here, any of the shops that you listed will have the bonus. Yes. And Darlene, I did confirm with Nina that after the open house, we did go, she did go back through and put bonuses in people's carts. Um, so you would probably just need to sign into your account, check your order history, and it's most likely there. If you are confused or not sure where to find that, um, get a hold of Nina and she will help you. Okay. So if you bought it at any of the other opportunities, we did have early access at festival and the open house. We did get you the bonus and the free gift because you got to have that part, right? Yeah, for sure. And they don't last long. So, all yeah. right, you all, I think we did it. I think we did it. So thank you, Linda. I appreciate you Welcome. popping in here and showing everyone how to put this together. And now it's time to go shopping, get your 10% <laughs> off, get your bonus, get all the good things before it expires um, and stay tuned for the next workshop, right? All right. Congratulations All right. to whoever the winner might be. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye. All right. Bye.